Hey everybody, how's it going? Welcome back to the channel. Tonight we're doing another quick tip in Orca Slicer. We're talking about how to directly bring your vector files into Orca Slicer and 3D print them. Uh, so this cuts out a significant portion of my workflow related to exporting and importing uh, vector files. This is great. This is a feature that I believe has come over from Bamboo and or Prusa or one of the other ones and it has made its way into Orca. I'm not sure when. Um, it's probably been hiding in there for a little bit. I just never noticed it. Uh, I happened to notice it the other day and it's fantastic. So super simple. Um, and we're going to walk through a little process on how to bring it in, how to do a quick modification to add a backer. So you're not getting a bunch of, you know, just separate 3d printed parts. So I'm going to go ahead and delete this for now. And with a blank plate, it's really easy. Just anywhere on, on the plate, right click, add primitive down here at the bottom is SVG. You click that. I'm going to bring in this shield logo that I have. And from here, you get this cool little window on the right. You can do some very basic moving around from positioning. You can change your depth and your aspect ratio. I'm going to make this thing just two and a half millimeters tall. Uh, and I'm going to leave the X and Y ratio, the aspect ratio, the same. I'm not going to mess with it. You can change the rotation. You can mirror it. You can even have it face the camera. Um, I'm not sure. I'm not sure what that feature's for. Uh, I'm going to ignore it for now and not think about it until I need to think about it. And from there, that's all I'm going to do uh, with, with that particular thing. So that is bringing the vector file in. Um, like I said, normally, I would have to pull that into Fusion, pick every single little part, extrude it, export, blah, blah, blah. Don't have to do anymore. Uh, super easy. Fantastic. So now I want to add that round backer to it. And what I found the easiest way to do is to actually add it as a separate part first. So with nothing selected here, right-click anywhere else, and I'm going to add another primitive. I'm going to do a cylinder. And I'm going to go ahead and scale this thing, not move, scale. And I'm going to make this non-uniform. I want this 200 by 200 by 1 millimeter thick. And, and then I'm going to adjust the position because I do want these things aligned over the top of each other. So I'm going to go ahead and hit move. And I'm going to just sort of play with some numbers here. So 134 in the X and 126 in the Y. 134, 126. Remember that. So now I'm going to pick um, the actual logo itself, 134, 126. So now I know that these things are absolutely centered over the top. And my, my logo is probably not completely symmetrical, and that's fine, but I do like how the clubs are over overhanging um, the right amount on the other side. Looks like I've got good spacing. I'm happy. I'm going to keep this. Now I'm going to go ahead and combine these together and make it all one file. Control A on your keyboard to select all. Uh, you can also do it up here under the edit menu. And then I'm going to right click anywhere and I'm going to say assemble. So now I've got one part. If I click off, if I click any part of this, it is all just one file now. So that's great. And then you can go through your normal process of just coloring. I'm going to go ahead and paint this. I'm going to say I want this background black. Oops, I'm going to fill. Don't want to do edge detection. Black. See how most of it here is now white. I'm going to go ahead and just change some of this to gray. Doinky, doinky, doinky. And I'm happy. So three colors. If I had more, I'd use them. Uh, those are the three I have loaded right now. So that's what I'm going to do. The one last thing I'm going to do is um, one. You know, one, you've been 3D printed long enough. When you have a big flat surface like this, um, and this is obviously the thing that everyone looks at. You know, surface imperfections stand out, uh, especially if you're close enough, right? So if you're within like a foot of this thing, you're you're going to notice them. So I want something to hide it, right? It's not unlike using fuzzy skin on on walls, um, where it hides your seam lines and hides imperfections. So I like using now this little thing called in the top surface pattern over here on the left. Instead of the standard monotonic line, I like using this Hilbert curve. It gives everything a bit of a matte finish. It hides some of those imperfections. Again, it's not perfect. But, you know, when everything looks good far enough away, right, it lets a bit of a Monet effect. Uh, so when we go ahead and slice this, you can see now where it's got this sort of pixelated look to it as you scroll in, right? That's what the Hilbert curve looks like. And as you're looking at it from, from a decent distance away, it just looks like it's part of it. And so it hides a lot of those pass lines uh, of your nozzle, especially with a jump of back and forth and things like that. So I like this one. It was pretty cool. So let's go print it and see how it works. Okay. Not bad. A little hairy. We'll get it cleaned up though. Okay, not bad. Came out pretty good. 
Um, I definitely liked it a lot. It was a little bit fuzzy, right? So use a torch, burn it off a little bit, do a little cleanup, but it but, you know, took all of a, maybe two minutes to do. So again, really, really thin test piece. I'm sure I'll print this thicker. This was more of just uh, seeing how that feature works. So anyway, I hope this helps. I hope someone's uh, able to use this and has a fun time with it. And I'll talk to y'all later.